So what's this obsession with six pack abs? I would yeah. like to have good amount of food. And in general, I feel very comfortable in my physique and I'm six to eight percent body fat. This yes. week, I'll let you uh, talk more. Hey guys, welcome back to Train with JC and Bala. I am JC and uh, Bala. And Bala here. And Bala, you seem perfectly fine. Yeah. Last week you were down with viral <laughs> and you seem completely fine. Two days, I think I was down for two days after that. Right. Friday and Saturday. On Sunday, I'm here. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's talk about this week's update, Bala. This yes. week I'll let you uh, talk more. Yeah. So last week I think uh, we did the video on Thursday. Right. right? So uh, she has gotten the diet for effectively four days, mm -hmm. considering today morning she took right. the update. For the four days, she has lost another 0 0.2 inch. So, okay. I think we're in line with Is that. Is she still on uh, 1700 calories? No, no, no we, I have brought her back to 1400. 14, okay. 1400. And okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've mean, kept her stable at 1400. I'm going to continue 1400 for one complete week. So, probably right. by this weekend is what uh, I'm expecting another 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 inch loss to happen. Right. Well, I was looking at the pictures. I mean, she looks tremendously different from, uh, you know, first week to now. Even her midsection is looking far more, um, you know, like chiseled and she's, she's definitely looking uh, better, more muscular. Yeah, the target is six pack. I think it is really aggressive, but yeah, I mean, let's see by end of next month. If, if that is the target, I have to keep making her lose about 0.5-ish every week from here. Right. And you think you'll be able to do that? Let's see, I mean, that's the intention. Even if I'm not getting the actual target, even if I'm getting 80% or 90%, it's still a very good transformation. But I want to discuss a very intriguing topic with you, which thinking that a lot of people have in their heads. What's this obsession with six-pack abs? And uh, <laughs> look, ironically, you know, I'm the guy who's always shredded for the last yeah. 10 years. I'm, I always have a six-pack abs and I'm always like between 6 to 8% body fat. But in general, do you think this obsession with Six pack abs, it's, uh, it's uh, bordering on some sort of mental illness, or is just what do you, what it's, do you think? It's just which kind of physique you're comfortable in, right? A lot of people feel comfortable being in a lower body fat percentage. Fantastic. You go ahead and maintain that. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. yeah. But uh, a guy like me, I'm like okay with, you know, being around 15%. 16% right. but you know I need good amount of food I need to function really well in the yeah. gym I yeah. want to perform really hard so that is my goal I don't want to spend majority of my year eating less calories and you know trying to be shredded I would like to have good amount of food yeah. perform really well according to that and I, I think progress. it also boils down to uh, people's habits for example you know obviously I was fat at one point of time um, that means I did not have a very good relationship with food now i don't feel like eating a lot like even if you put like you know cake in front of me i don't fancy food anymore and personally uh, for me it's a task to eat food hmm. and i have also noticed that my performance my testosterone levels my overall health is generally better when i'm below 70 kgs and I, I feel faster i feel leaner and in general i feel very comfortable in my physique when i'm six to eight percent body fat it's probably because that's where i have spent majority of my time, right? So it is also to do with where have you been? For example, if somebody is an athlete, they've never been unfit. Hmm. And so for them, that's their comfort zone. That's zone. their home. Yeah. Whereas an unfit person who has spent most of their time in an unfit category, being for them being fit is going to feel odd. Huh. It's, it's doing something unnatural. Exactly. It feels unnatural yeah. and then you do it for a long period of time and suddenly that becomes That natural. becomes your natural. Yes. Right. So I think uh, so I, I think this is a very interesting um, a discussion which we'd probably expand on in a separate series. You know, it's, it's not about uh, your, your fascination with six-pack abs or if it's some sort of a mental illness or something. I think what people need to understand is where have they spent majority of their time Right from, uh, right from their childhood, have they spent majority of their time being an athlete? Um, if they have, then being unfit will become very unnatural for them. In a similar manner, if you have spent majority of your time being uh, unfit, then being fit is going to be unnatural. At the end of the day, one has to decide which side of life you don't want to live, you know, yeah. that's that's exactly what but I think uh, there's an underlying reasoning for that is how much you're regularly consuming in terms of food. Yeah. 
and appetite is adaptive. So if you're yes. used to eating 3000 calories of all, you know, high yeah, satiety food yeah, items. Exactly. Yeah. Then, you know, putting that eight person even at 2400 will be a task. They yeah. will be like, oh, I'm getting very less food. But contrary to other person who's been eating 1500 calories as a, yeah. you know, high satiety food item. Yeah. Even if you give 2000, I'll be like too much. Food, yeah, that's me. Right. So yeah, because that, my, yeah. that adaptation to appetite will also decide and you have to train to slowly get to that point where you're only yeah. having a certain amount of food as satiety food yeah. to yeah. fulfill yourself. Yeah, for example, I eat roughly 150 grams of boy, uh, raw rice, which if you cook it, it's literally like Four, 450 50, grams, right? Right? which is a lot of rice. Yeah. And bearing that, then I have paneer, which is again very high satiety food, right? Then I have curd which is again very high satiety. I'll add some potatoes, which is again very high satiety. So even at 1800 calories, I'm like, dude, I can't eat more. And then the monotony, right? Because you're eating the same food every day. You generally start liking that food less and less over a period of time. Yeah. Right. But because it's a part of your routine and then you're like, oh, okay, this is food. I'm just going to eat. Right. So, and then over a period of time, what you do is, for example, there was this one time, you know, I, I was, I was really craving for carrot halwa. Hmm. And for that entire month, I ate literally half kg carrot halwa every single day till I was like bored mm, to death. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I can't eat carrot halwa now because I ate one month carrot halwa like half kg every single day. And I used to make it in very little amount of milk. And if you think about it, it's literally carrot salad because you're yeah. adding sugar free and very little amount of milk and it's practically carrot. It tastes amazing. Yeah. Right. So I think it all boils down to how you choose your palate and how you do the same things over and over again. You become your actions. You know, you end up what you do every single day. You know, that's that's what you become. Anyways, coming back to my bitch, I think Deepak is also kind of becoming like me. <laughs> he has stopped enjoying food. He, I mean, he enjoys food, but he's not like craving food because he's practically eating everything. His diet is filled with carbs, um, you know, decent amount of fats and he's consuming 120, 130 grams of protein. Still at 2,000 calories? Still at 2,000 calories. <laughs> yeah. But but we did change yeah. his steps to now 8,000 8, uh, per day, right? I'm still not taking him to 10,000 steps per day. So we started with 6,500 or 6,000 steps and moved to 7,500. Now this month I've moved him to 8,000 steps. So he's still losing weight. And uh, as of today, this morning, his weight was around uh, 107.2 kgs. So that's literally 19 kgs. Yeah. And uh, this month has just started. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that by the end of this month, we'll be able to touch 100 kilograms, which was our original target. Yeah. Uh, another thing is that today his blood glucose levels were high. So I'm suspecting that his HbA1c has dropped further. So we'll conduct a blood test. And if his HbA1c has dropped further, because remember, we started with 12.7. Mm. And then last month, it came down to a 9. nine. I'm assuming that this month, it's going to be around 7-ish. So if it's seven-ish, then they'll have to further reduce the dosage of metformin. metformin. Right. So he'll be in touch with his doctor and he'll be able to reduce his dose of metformin. And if he's like seven, that's like really good. You know, coming from 12.7, which was like highly diabetic to now yeah. almost like a <laughs> normal a normal person in another month. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that and we'll take his blood reports maybe in a day or two. Mm. And uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah he is now able to do partial push-ups around 45 in one go. Right, so he's very close to 50 push ups. 37 to 45 is such a yes, big jump. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now he's excited, he's eager because I told him that by the end of this, we should be able to do 50 push ups in a row. And so I think he's the kind of a guy who, once he sets his mind to, he also achieves. I think people also adapt the style of the coach they are training with. So he's becoming more like me, and Sapna, I guess, she's becoming more like Yeah, you. She's, she's so much into weights now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and our focus is always on, you know, Performing, lifting, lifting, yeah, lifting heavier yeah, lifting and heavy. doing the proper range of yeah, motion. Yeah. And Deepak is more now into circuit training and he wants to learn boxing. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, this is an update from my side and uh, from Bala's side. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the series. As you can see that we have busted a lot of myths with this series that if you're a diabetic, you cannot eat carbs. Um, what are the myths out there, Bala? 
um, high protein is bad for you. Deepak is consuming high protein. Supply women is consuming high protein. Like, yeah, it's women very should simple very to... There are so yeah. many myths. Yeah, and then Deepak is literally drinking like 4 to 5 liters of water every day. So another myth that you shouldn't drink more water. It will cause hyponatremia. <laughs> which is again very rare. A lot of people don't understand the basics. Um, then what else? Low carb. He's not on low carb. Deepak is on he's high carb. He's, not on low carb. he's diabetic and he's consuming high carb diet you every single day. You can eat chocolates in your diet. Yeah, <laughs> you can eat chocolates in your diet. You don't have to drop sugar. Sugar. He's literally consuming sugar. Some days he's also getting dessert, gulab jamun, right? So yeah. he's consuming all sorts of food. So with this series, if if you are really sincere and you really want to learn how it all works, you would watch the series from episode one. And uh, you will see that we have been able to not only just bring in this transformation line, but also our predictions have been uh, very, very accurate. And that basically is because we have trained so many people, it's crazy, right? <laughs> uh, Bala himself has trained about uh, 2,000, 3,000? More That's than? On the plan. Yeah. Roughly 2,000, 3,000 yeah. people, including celebrities, cricketers, and everybody. And uh, yeah, I have trained some notable people as well. And this time it was a challenge that we just trained celebrities, which is not true. Um, we trained anybody and we took, uh, we picked two random guys and look, we've been able to transform them in uh, just over so slightly, slightly more than two months. But in three months, the transformation is going to be much, much, much more prominent. So yeah, that's it from our side for this week. Hope you guys are doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.